Hey there, everyone. Welcome to a new Let's Play with me, your host, Tim. And today, we will begin playing through Underrail together. There will be some prep here which you can skip by going down to the comment section down below where you will find a pinned comment from me, which will have a link in it, allowing you to jump ahead to where we actually start character creation. In case you don't want to hear me talk about the game, about what it is, how we're playing it, how far I got in it, etc, etc, for maybe like five minutes or so. There'll also be another that link down there which will let you skip the character creation and go right for the game, in case you don't care about the type of character I'm making. In which case, you'll just have to pause the game when I bring up my character sheet, etc, etc, to see what type of character I rolled. Right, Tim, what the heck is Under Rail? Why are we playing it? Well, I've been in the mood to play a dungeon-y type of game, and I've never beaten Under Rail, though I got pretty close to doing so, and I figured, why not? Let's record ourselves playing a game of Under Rail. This is a very long RPG, similar to the Fallout series, but it'll take longer than that to beat the main campaign. Um, it's an isometric, turn-based combat game. And we have a character, he'll have all his own stats, we get to make decisions. Decisions matter in this game as well, as we venture through a post-apocalyptic world, all taking place under the Earth, here, in the subway stations of sorts, I think. Um, there's not too much more to say about the story. The story will unfold as we play it, and I don't want to ruin any of the lore. We'll find out all about it as we play. The game is very difficult, and you should expect me to die frequently in this game. In fact, I'd say it's pretty much impossible to play this game without dying at least once. It's very brutal. If you make a mistake or the rolls don't go your way in combat, you'll find yourself flat on your back very, very quickly. This is especially true with the type of character I plan on making for us. He's going to be more of a glass cannon-y type of character, and with a bunch of miscellaneous stats and uh, feats rather than going all-out combat, which itself is something else I want to point out. If you decide to pick up this game because you really like it, know that you're going to need to at least invest in some form of combat. Unlike the Fallout series, where you could play through the game without a combat character, relying on your companions to help you out, this game has very few companions, if any, and those companions you get are only adventuring with you for a brief amount of time, one combat, as opposed to adventuring with you non-stop with whatever you need to tackle or any problems you encounter. Um... That's, uh, I think that about sums it up. Oh, well, I also never beat the game. A heads up to anyone who has played Under Rail. I got as far as the deep caves, deep caverns, but I never stepped foot in them. So I've heard the last, that last section can be brutal. Ex very dominating, I believe is the proper word to use. Uh, it's a very dominating area. And uh, I didn't adventure in it. So keep that in mind when we eventually reach that spot, some 80 or 90 videos from now. Um, if it's too tough for me, I'll probably just retire the character rather than force myself to bash my head into the table over and over again about it. But we will make several attempts at it anyway. Uh, right, that's about it, everyone. So, I've already checked my voice over, and it's coming out well with the in-game volume. So, I think we're ready to start a new game. Let's go ahead and, uh, is there anything else I should mention? Oh, I guess one more thing, one more thing. So, combat is tough, as I mentioned, and you should expect me to die frequently. If I make a mistake in combat, which is to say the grenade doesn't go the right way, or I miss an attack I really, really, really super needed to hit, I will not reload the game. We are going to watch our character die all the time whenever any mistakes or any of the problems happen, and we'll just reload the game afterwards. I know quite a few Let's Players for this game just immediately hit escape and reload if they miss or if something bad happens to them. We're going to suffer because... It builds character, and we're going to be making our character. Let's go ahead and do that now. So, we get to pick a game difficulty level. Normal is what I'll be picking. I plan to make a thematic type of character, which is probably not very easy to do on the hard or especially the dominating difficulty of this game. Uh, I would highly recommend that you probably play on easy if you're not used to very, very hard games. This game is, again very brutal. If you pick this game up, I won't think anything less of you for playing the game on easy to start until you get the hang of it. It is really tough. Really tough. We'll be playing on normal. It does say this is the way the game is meant to be played. I'll hover over this so you guys can pause it and read about uh, the, what the hard difficulty does. And here's dominating difficulty. Again, you guys can pause it and read about it if you like. Next, we have to choose an experience. Um... How we gain levels in this game. There's the Oddity Experience way, and the Classic way. I, myself, have played both. I find Classic to be more forgiving than Oddity. So, again, you can pause the game, and you can see what it says over there for the Oddity Experience system. As best I can sum it up, is imagine that 
for level one, you need only four experience points to level up. That's it, just four. But you only get experience points for certain things in this game. Killing creatures won't give you experience points. Looting them might. They might have an item on them, which you can gain an experience point from. You can only gain a certain amount of experience from that item before it stops giving you experience points. You can find these items in locked cases or cabinets. Um, you can find them hidden throughout the world on corpses. You can find them uh, from quest creatures as well. You can also gain this oddity experience by completing quests or doing certain tasks. Classic, you earn experience points for everything. Killing creatures earns you experience points. Exploring new places earns you experience points. You even earn experience points for the oddity items that you pick up. I find that with Classic, we will hit our max level at about the three-fourths point in the game. With Oddity, you will hit the last experience point very, very close to the very final, like, minutes of the game has been my, has been my experience with the Oddity. So we'll be playing Classic so I can level up a little faster. I think in the beginning of the game, Oddity is, actually is faster than Classic, but then for the second, like, two-thirds of the game, Classic is much faster, or actually probably the final four-fifths of the game. Okay, now we get to make ourselves a character. So I've thought about this, and I like to make a thematic character for this game, which we can totally do on normal difficulty level. We're gonna play Garrett, Master Thief, from the Thief series. Next, we get to pick a portrait for our character. Let's go ahead, and I already have one picked out. There we go, we're gonna pick this guy. Oh, I gotta sneeze. Okay, next, for our stats over here, I'm not going to go over what all of this does. I will hover over it and give a brief synopsis on our stats, our skills, and the feats, but only very brief. Very, very brief. If you guys want more information, feel free to pause the game as I hover over all this stuff, and you can read about what the text says over there on the right. There is a, I think there's a group of videos this one gentleman made about uh, what all the feats do, what all the skills and stats do, and how important it is for all of them, and or how to make a character. If not, there's other videos online which can definitely show this information. I highly recommend you go and view them if you're interested in something more de in-depth covering character creation. Strength, this affects our carry weight, very important. It also affects what type of weapons we can use effectively in combat, and how much damage we do with certain weapons, sledgehammers in particular. Dexterity affects our uh, thievery, uh, thievery abilities, so things like st stealth, pickpocketing, lockpicks. It also affects um, some ranged attacks as well. It also, I believe, increases the damage that your daggers do. Agility affects our nimbleness. I think this affects uh, flat stealth, and it also affects our ability to dodge and not take damage in combat if we choose to play a dodgy type of character. Constitution is our ability to, uh, this is our hit points, I believe. I think it also um, helps reduce poisons in the game, reduce their effects and how much damage you take from them. Perception is your ability to, to find secrets in this game. If you don't have a high perception, the secret will never make itself visible to you and you won't be able to access what it's hiding. Perception also affects, I believe, your accuracy and damage with ranged weapons. Will is useful for a psionic character, and helps you re resist a tiny bit of psionic damage. Intelligence affects your crafting skills. If you want to make the best items or have the best items in the game, be that either consumables or permanent items like armor or weapons, you will want to craft. It's the best way to get the, uh, well, I don't know if it's the best way, but it gives you the best or can give you the best access or the access to the best items this game can possibly offer. And it is worth it. It is totally worth it. Okay, so for Garrett, we're going to make a thematic character. So Garrett wasn't that strong. I don't remember him lugging around heavy armor. He did, he did lug around bodies. Or what, oh, one more thing really quick before we get any further. Your starting stats may not be lowered be, below 3. And they may not be increased above 10 for your starting character. Every four levels, you will earn a point for stats at level 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, and 24. Max level in this game is 25, to my knowledge. Okay, so for Garrett, we're going to lower his strength by 1. I'm not a fan of lowering it to 3. I think that's a little too weak. Um, I don't want him to have that lower carrying capacity, because you're going to loot a lot of stuff 
in this game and need to lug it around. We're going to be storing a lot of stuff into into our um, stashes and cabinets, whatever, wherever it is that we're going to be resting and spending the night. So, and we're going to be going back and forth to these locations, off screen at least, pretty often. I don't want to have to do that more often than necessary. We're going to leave a strength of, we're going to leave Garrett's strength at four. Dexterity. So this is really important for a dex, uh, for a thief character. This affects our ability to do thievery stuff like open locks and so on. We're going to up this up to eight to start. Agility. I do plan to make Garrett a dodgy type of character. We're going to increase this to seven. Constitution. I remember Garrett not having that many points in the hit points back when I was playing Thief. We'll lower it by one. I, again, I don't like lowering this, these stats to three. I think four will be okay. Perception. This is our ability to uh, use ranged combat. Garrett was a bow user in addition to using uh, blackjacks and swords. So we're going to we're gonna pick crossbows as one of our weapons. Let's go ahead and up this a bit. We're going to go ahead and lower Will 1. Garrett got his snot kicked out of him back when he was trying to face up against the Hand Brotherhood. He dodged the, the their ranged attacks rather than um, try to resist them. That won't happen in this game, though. We're going to take that one point we earned and put it in perception. Garrett also was just of average intelligence. He needed some help to puzzle out what things were going on around him, and he got pranked once or twice, if I recall correctly, losing an eye, actually, in fact. We'll leave his intelligence at 5 at the moment. And these will be the stats for our Garrett. Next are skills. Let's cover them as quickly as we possibly can. And remember, you can you can pause the game and look over there on the right in case you want to read about what this does. Guns, you need a certain level of gun skill to use, I think, certain guns. The higher ranking guns, the more accurate your guns are, and the more damage I believe they do, I think. Throwing, throwing is useful for anything you throw. Grenades, in particular, and throwing knives and nets. There may be one or two other things you can throw in the game that I can't remember. Crossbows, is useful for your, well, your crossbows. And, oh, guns, by the way, it covers rifles, shotguns, which aren't in the game yet. Uh, it might not even be rifles in the game, now I think about it. Submachine guns and pistols. Melee is any type of melee weapon. Sledgehammers or daggers, I think, are the by far the most too common. I think melee may also be uh, power fists or fist weapons, like uh, punching daggers, etc., etc. For our Garrett, oh, uh, well, let's, let's cover all these first and we'll put points. Dodge is your ability to, I believe, avoid melee attacks. That's the attack will the attacker will try to hit you and will miss. Higher ranks than this will make them miss more often. Evasion is the same thing as dodge, but for range attacks. I also think evasion reduces the damage you take from AoE attacks, such as enemy grenades. Stealth is your ability to, well, not be seen. Uh, stealth in this game works a little differently than in other games. It's uh, but I really, really enjoy it. I think they did a great job on how stealth works in this game. Um, know that if you want to be really sneaky, you're going to need some points in this in stealth. Hacking is your ability to... It's the equivalent of, like, DSX. Remember the, um... Uh, what is it? The multi-tools, I think is what they were called. So hacking is used to get you through electronic locks. Lockpicking is used to get you through normal locks. Lockpicking cannot be used to get you through uh, electronic locks, and hacking won't get you through normal locks either. Pickpocketing is used to, well, pick people's pockets. Pretty obvious, that one. Traps, this is used to help you locate traps. It is also used to help you disarm those traps that you locate. It is also used for your traps as well. Um, the higher rank in, your, in this trap, the, more, the harder it will be for enemies to detect your traps. Technology, all of this is used to help you craft things and take things apart, disassemble them. You have all these various stats. We'll just hover over them all quickly so you guys can pause the game and go ahead and read about them if you like. Psy, these are your psionic powers. Effectively, you will be your magic user if you go ahead and take these. We will not be taking these this game. There's actually quite a few Let's Plays out there of people using psionic characters. I recommend you go watch them in case you want to see a psionic character type of person. And social stuff. Persuasion and Intimidation, these can give you, these can let you avoid certain combats or get you quests. Mercantile, if you have a high mercantile uh, score, merchants will sell you rarer stuff, stuff they wouldn't normally sell people. You also get more money based on uh, quest rewards if your mercantile is high. And I think you can also sell your stuff for a little more money based on your mercantile score. Garrett himself, uh, alright, well, let, let, let's cover this. So, Garrett, uh, well, Garrett used a bow. We're gonna go ahead and put 15 points into crossbows. This gives you a chance to explain this number in the parenthesis. This number, this 15, that's the number of skill points we've actually put into the skill. 
The 20 is our effective skill. If I was to lower my perception by two, for example, notice that my crossbows has gone down. That's because this skill is based on perception. You can see it right there under related base ability. Next, Garrett also used a, a sword and he, he was pretty good with it. Also used a blackjack. We're gonna do something I would not normally ever recommend you do in this game. We're gonna go ahead and level melee and crossbows as two offensive capabilities. The game heavily rewards you for focusing, not scattering your points around, so I don't normally recommend you do this, but I want to play Garrett, so we're going to go ahead and do that. Finally, Garrett also threw a few things. He had his scout orbs, he threw um, the flashbangs, so we're going to take some points in throwing as well. But we're not going to take 15 points in it, we're just going to take 10. Now, this gives you a chance to talk about offense really quickly. You almost always want to level up your max amount you can put into your into your offensive abilities every level that you possibly can. The enemies are going to get tougher and tougher, harder to hit, and more hit points, and you're going to need more points and crossbows and melee to hit them over and over and over again for our character. So I'm really heavily committed here. This is going to render some of the other options I have tougher to do. Throwing, though, we can stop putting points in throwing once it hits about level 60 or 70. At that point, we should have enough throwing that we can reliably throw grenades up to a few hexes away from us and hit whatever we're throwing them at. So 10, we're not going to put points of uh, every level into this, but 10 is good enough to start. Next, for dodge, I plan to use nets pretty often in this game to deal with melee attackers, especially really tough ones. So we're going to level our dodge, but we're going to put 10 points in it rather than 15 to start. And we'll go ahead and put 15 points into evasion. Much tougher for us to deal with ranged attackers. Next, Sutterfuge. Well, Garrett is a thief. So we're going to go ahead and put 15 points into stealth. He wasn't very good at mechanical things, though. Uh, I don't recall him actually hacking his way through anything. We're going to leave hacking at zero. Lockpicking, though. Yeah, he was pretty good at lockpicking. We'll go ahead and give him 15 lockpick. Pickpocketing, well, he's a thief. We're going to go ahead and put 15 points into this as well. And Traps is going to get our leftover 10 points. When it comes to, to defense, you generally want to increase these a lot. If, um, if you're going to play a dodgy type of character, you almost always want to max them because the, the, your enemies you're going to be fighting have a lot of points in their crossbows and melee, and these will help counteract those points that they have. But for melee, I'm hoping we can basically avoid melee by stunning or trapping melee enemies and then picking them off. It'd still be important to put points in dodge to help us avoid them, but it won't be as important as evasion will be. For stealth, we're, we're going to be using stealth a lot, almost all the time in hostile areas, so we're going to put 15 points in that, obviously. I'm fine leaving hacking behind. We'll just deal with lockpicks. That will get us around most of the places, and we can find key cards and what have you, hopefully, to get around what we can't hack. Pickpocketing as well, by the way, pickpocketing and lockpicking. These can also, you can stop putting points in these about level 70 or so. So we'll level these very, very quickly, uh, max whatever we possibly can do. But once we hit 70, we'll stop putting points in these. That will free up points for other things instead. And traps, traps like lockpicking and, and pickpocketing, we don't have to increase this to max level as quickly as possible. Probably put about 70 points in this, 60 points, and then we can probably put points in other things instead. We will be taking some technology much later on in the game. I haven't figured out yet what type of technology I want yet, though. But we'll make our mind later. Haven't made up my mind if I want to take uh, armor, weapons, and uh, then that's it. Or if I want to be able to make my own special crossbow bolts and weapons instead. We won't take any social, and we won't take any psi. Lastly, we have feats. You get one... F oh, every level, by the way, you get 40 points to put into your skills. So you can level 8 skills max every single time that you level you can only put five points into a skill every level uh, well i'm sorry your new maximum increases by five points every level it's 15 now it'll be 20 next at level 2 25 at level 3 etc etc for feats you get one feat every other level and two feats to start i'm just going to hover over these so you guys can see what they are the skills have already been adjusted based on what stats and and I'm um, sorry, what stats and skills we've taken will show what ones I have here. I could hit show all feats, and this will show all like 100 feats here. Just 
These are the ones that we have available to us. So I'm gonna hover over them really quickly so you guys can see what they are. I plan on choosing Nimble to start, at least to help us with our um, stealthy and dodgy type of character. Yep, just gonna hover over all of them for you guys really quick. Again, feel free to pause the game, take a peek at them. Here's aim shot. Burglar. Hit and run. Marksman. And sprint. So those are our feats that we can take. We're gonna grab nimble. Because this way, our armor won't weigh us down as much. Which means we can keep our dodge and evasion. I'll show what I mean uh, later on in the game. And next, I'm torn between taking burglar and marksman to start. Or aim shot. I think it's probably going to be more important for us to take probably aim shot to start, though. Or marksman. Burglar is a very nice quality of life, and we will take burglar before uh, at level 4, probably, or slightly before level 4. But uh, I don't think we'll take burglar to start. I'm thinking aim shot's so nice, but marksman is nice, too. Marksman will let us use special crossbow bolts without spending uh, their extra action points for them. Aim shot though gives us a guaranteed critical hit if we hit with that attack. I think we'll take marksman. That makes more sense. Garrett was pretty nimble in his uh, in his outfit when he was wearing his leather armor, and he used his elemental bolts pretty often. I don't remember him having trouble using them or them causing him more action points than anything else. So we'll go with this to start our character. All right, and that's our Garrett. Let's go ahead and start our game. Hope you guys like it. Here we go. All right, last topic, of course, earthquake reports, uh, earth earthquake repairs. What's the situation at the South Tunnel? Got to dig deeper to plant the explosives, or we risk more damage to the tunnel. Almost everyone is working shifts up there. Shouldn't be too long now. He nods. Gorski, how's the security looking? Got one man at the cave exit, and that's enough, as far as I'm concerned. Automated security is strong there. As long as we know the crossroad and the cove are clear, no one can sneak up on us. Also got one man at the underpassages. He's been ordered not to open the gate no matter what. The last thing we need right now are those bloody lurkers sneaking up on us. Everyone else is up at the platform securing workers and tunnels. Good, good. If no one has anything else to add, that will conclude this council meeting. Oh, actually, there is just one more thing. In case you weren't informed already, I admitted a new citizen to the station. That Garrett fellow? Yes. I think he would be a good addition to this station. He and Ventsor are still at the range, but they should be done any moment now, I believe. You put too much trust in your tests, Tanner. All I care about is how he handles live action, not how many points he's got. Well, we'll find out soon enough. Let's put him to work immediately. We need all hands on deck right now. Indeed. That is all. Vera? Gorski? An unexpected yawn interrupts Fensel. He instinctively raises his left hand to cover his mouth, forgetting that he is wearing a respirator. A tiny smile creeps up on your face due to this very fact, yet you understand that after so many hours of testing, these kinds of lapses tend to seek up on people. He soon continues. Uh, excuse me. All in all, Garrett, as far as I'm concerned, we're done here. I've got a few other things to do, but unless you'd like to have another go at the testing range, you have no reason to stay here any longer. Everyone, I think I can explain and we can see how all this stuff works rather than do the testing range. We're going to skip the tutorial. Let's actually ask this first, though. Uh, how do I compare to the other newcomers, Vensel? I can't tell you that, Garrett. Come on, man. It'll stay between you and me. He owns a game. Nah. You'll have to be patient, I'm afraid. So, uh, are we done here, or, uh... Yeah, I'm feeling pretty tired. It's hardly a secret you are, too. Besides, I can't wait to check out my new room. I have no doubt you'll like it. I have yet to see any newcomers complain. <laughs> uh, nothing more to say than congratulations again, Garrett, and welcome to Southgate Station. Go and get some rest. See you around, Bensel. Okay, everyone. Welcome to the game. Here we are. First thing I'm going to be doing is adjusting my... um. My whatchamacallit a bit here. Let's see, we don't need that. You can go into 
control nine. So this is a, uh, let's let's describe the GUI really quick. Here's our hotkeys. We have three hot bars. We have the normal hot bar, one with shift, and one with control. Hitting this will lock the actions that are on there, so we can't tear them off like you see me doing. I don't think I need attack. I don't think I need burst. We're never going to use burst. Okay, over here are your. Uh, so these are just things you can use in general. Over here are special as a special hot bar for your. Um, well, for consumables, um, grenades, health kits, etc. Well, actually, health kits can stay here. Certain items you cannot you. We'll talk about it later. <laughs> later. Let's go ahead and uh, click around here. Oh, let's we'll cover some more stuff really quick. Here's our character sheet. We always have access to that. Here's our inventory. These are all the items we have in our inventory. Our armor and weapons. Grenades and special crossbow bolts. Ammunition. Um, consumables like hypos and other uh, chemicals. Like uh, stim packs, etc. Items which can be used to repair or recharge. Items which do repairing or recharging, plus other miscellaneous special stuff, and keys that we have. Here's our map. This is all the stuff that we are aware of at the moment. We are only really aware of, it looks like, uh, this place. Yep, that's all I got. Oddities. We don't have to worry about oddities because we're not playing oddity mode. Any notes? We can keep take notes ourselves. Crafting. This is, uh, we don't have this quite yet. This will be much later on in the game. Let's get started. First off, it's dark in here, so we'll turn on some lights. And we'll see what stuff we have uh, in our room. Oh, right. There's fog of war in this game as well. Things you can't see get grayed out. You don't know what's behind them. Places you have it in are dark black. You don't know what, what the area looks like whatsoever. So in our footlocker. Holding down tab will show everything you can possibly interact with, like this broken pixel. This colorful mosaic doesn't seem to represent anything in particular. Uh, how about the hanged rat? What could it mean? <laughs> anything in the shelves? Nope, nothing in the shelves. How about... Oh, we have a computer. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. Security scope, garret, personal computer, full access level, full. We have two messages. Key card from Wayne. Hi, I fixed your door so the key card should work fine now. If you haven't found it yet, the key card should be in your desk. See you around. And from Tanner. Congratulations. You have passed all the tests we presented you in the past weeks and have now obtained full citizenship in Southgate Station. On behalf of the entire community, I welcome you into our fold. Visit me in my office in the Commons as soon as you've rested. We can discuss your duties in the coming days. Okay. Um, well, we have a desk here. We have a compass. It's easy to get turned around in the tunnels of Underrail. You'll probably need this. The red needle points to the north. Take that. We have 200 Southgate Station credits. This is the internal currency of the Southgate Station. There are two other currencies in this game. Charons, which are used everywhere else. And there's also the Protectorate, uh, Federate Dollars, I believe. Used use only, I think, for the and the Protectorate. We have a private quarters key card. Unlocks our private quarters. All right, there we go. We'll check these lockers as well. They might hold some equipment of ours. We have some armor. We have a anti-thermic rat hound leather overcoat. This overcoat is made of rat hound leather. No matter how hard you try to wash it out, the faint stench of this filthy creature remains. Its surface material can somewhat reflect the high radiant loads produced by fire. So this is pretty bad that, to see this in our inventory because this is going to decrease our stealth by 26 points as our starting armor. We we'll need to purchase some better armor than this to start. But we'll wear it. To, we'll wear it right now. It. So as you can see, it has resistances here. I believe the game picks the best type of resistance and uses it depending upon how much damage you take. So if it, you hit by attack that deals three damage, I think the three damage would prevent it. That three. If you hit by the attack that does ninety damage, the seventeen percent mechanical would take in. And of course, it depends upon the damage type that you have. The armor penalty for this is fifteen percent. Which normally would reduce our our defense, our dodge, and our evasion by by a 15% as well. However, we have nimble, so our dodge and evasion are not affected by the armor because it reduces the armor penalty by 15%. Hope that made sense. But our armor penalty is effectively zero. While we're burning this, we're also immune to burning. That actually is pretty useful. We can see how much it's worth: 1,676 bucks, and also weighs six pounds. You can see our current weight of 6140 up there in that left-hand corner. 
We also have a patching tool. Can be used to patch leather armors and tactical vests. Go ahead and take this. And we have two mechanical repair kits. Can be used to repair mechanical pieces of gear, such as firearms, melee weapons, and metal armor. Looks like we've also got three health, health hypos and five bandages. Why don't we put the... Oh, can we not... Oh, I need them in my inventory first. Let's grab the bandages. Bandages are used outside of combat to heal you quickly. We'll take the health hypos as well. Health hypos are generally used in combat or outside of combat if you're worried you're going to run into con another combat or conflict right away. Okay. Let's go ahead and leave our room and see what Southgate Station has available. Oh, there's a leak in the pipe. Let's see what Southgate Station has waiting for us. I'm pretty big on a... Is it, is it right clicking? Middle clicking? I like locking our doors whenever possible. So we'll, we'll, we'll keep our door locked. We have some shelves, we have a nice looking hallway, we have a camera as well, watching this place, probably for trouble evildoers or trouble seekers, like our Garrett. Nothing to worry about here though. We should walk around and at least take a look at all the doors to see which ones we can possibly lockpick later on. We are playing Garrett after all. Would it be Garrett if he wasn't trying to get in his neighbor's uh, things? Locked. We don't have any lockpicks, so we can't enter that. Lock bars, hacking 50. 50. Okay, so red means you're not getting into it whatsoever. Oh, there's another camera here, Tim. Be careful of that. Oh, hello. Open door. A bathroom. Someone's bathroom. We should still check it out. Nothing else in here. Oh, no. No, no, no. Look out, Garrett. Look out. I always like lock shutting doors behind me. You just make me try to do that all the time. I'm so sorry. That's going to probably be really annoying to everyone really quick. Let's look at another bathroom. Other showers, actually. Oh, I actually don't see any toilets in the, up in here. That's interesting. That's very interesting. All right, let's just get out of here. More locked doors. More locked doors. Probably require hacking in this place. Our door requires a key card. I'm imagining all the other places do, too. Yeah, hacking. All right, well, let's grab the elevator. So Tanner recommended we see him. He's in the commons. Let's go there to start. Ooh, very bright in this location. All right, everyone, let's cover one or two more things really quick. There's our portrait. This is our life. Our life runs out. We're dead. That's it. Um, this is focused. When you move around, that symbol will go away. After a few seconds, it pops back up. So as you can see, you're more effective in ranged combat. Focus is lost when you move. So fire first, then move. If you're gonna, if you want to, um, uh, if you want to actually get engaged in ranged combat, this is a bit tricky, especially for crossbows, because with crossbows, if you uh, the closer the enemy is, the harder it is to actually shoot them. Over here we have this weird symbol. I'll go ahead and let you guys go ahead and read that. Just know that this means that we are in a controlled zone. What that means is that uh, if we do, if anything suspicious happens, everyone will suspect us. If you put a trap down and someone walks into it and they get hit, everyone still thinks you've done it. So keep that in mind. It also means that if we do anything wrong, people will get angry at us and attack us and kill us. So we gotta remember that as well. That means no searching things that you're not supposed to search. We can search these because the hand's not red, I think. But if it was red, we would get in trouble for searching it if someone saw us. Oh, here's the bathrooms. We have urinals and three stalls. Oh, must be more men here, I guess, than girls. Lots of sinks. Lots of sinks. Is he in here? Doesn't look like it. Let's see who we have in here. We have, hold on, we have Vensel. Hey, Vensel. Did I tell you the one about the dude who did the range completely drunk? No. Hey, Garrett. Hey. How's it going, Garrett? Good. What's up? Not much. Good morning. How's it going, Garrett? Good, Mr. Security Guard. We have a cat here. Hello, cat. Meow. We have a, a board. We have a Jack Quicksilver. That's an interesting name. He's got blue and... He's got purple. He's a psionic, I think. What's up? I'm so tired from digging. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're probably clearing tunnels from the earthquake that happened. You met Arlene during your testing period. She's in charge of food preparation and rationing. Ha! 
We used to make fun of Tanner's stupidity high standards when admitting new people. Not the end of the world if we get someone imperfect, we said. And here you are, bringing us earthquakes on day one. Very funny, Arlene. I was only kidding, don't take it too seriously. Anyway, uh, what do you need? So how bad was it? The earthquake. For us, not that bad. The South Tunnel collapsed, so the train is out for a while. The station itself didn't suffer any major damage as far as I know. I've heard it's much worse up north. Something about Union's freighters crashing and getting buried on a side rail near Core City. Man, I can imagine all the vermin crawling out of their holes to take a bite of that cake. And I'm not talking about rat hounds. So what else is due besides the earthquake? Uh, Gorski's gathering up his squad. Don't know what they're up to, but they're armed. Got any rumors? Rumor has it that there's quite a number of people sitting outside United Station's embassy and junkyard. I guess they've been feeding them good. Alright, take care, Arlene. Interesting, so we've learned about a few locations already. What's happening out there? And the earthquake, and apparently it's done a lot more damage to other locations, not near us, though. Haven't seen you around here before. You stuck in this hole now as well. Oh, why would I be stuck? Thought you might be traveling and got trapped here by the earthquake. Uh, forget it. Name's Jack Quicksilver. Who are you? Uh, my name's Garrett. He nods a confirmation. Where you from, Jack? I'm not a citizen of any place, if that's what you're asking. I travel around a lot, but when I'm not on the train, I spend most of my time in Core City. Oh, what brought you here in the first place? A lucrative business opportunity, but it slipped past me, unfortunately. Oh, what happened to that business opportunity? It's a business secret. If you're interested in doing some work, though, that's something I can arrange. Oh, what's the pay? I'll pay you an SGS credits. 100 pieces. It's a package delivery job. You interested? Uh, yeah, tell me the details. If I get you closer. You know where the GMS warehouse block is? Uh, no, I don't. Uh, never mind, then. Can't risk you getting lost with the package. Later on, we'll figure it out. Oh, uh, yeah, he has blue, red, and purple. So let's cover this really quick. We can see that this is his life. This is a shield. We will have access to one of these later on in the game. Shields reduce the damage you take. It can absorb quite a bit of damage. This is his psionic ability, so he can cast magic spells, basically. So that wasn't where Mr. Tanner was. Looks like there's some... Uh, what are these? Crap, what is this? I, I want to call this a schoolroom. Classroom. That's what they're called, Tim. Anything in here? No. Nothing. Right, we shouldn't leave the light on. We have some barrels. We might as well search them. They're not red, so we can search them. Nothing in those... Oh, there's nothing in this classroom either. Oh, the kitchen. Let's sneak into the kitchen. What's here so far? We have shelves, a kitchen cabinet, and some boxes. Empty. How about this box? Nothing. Darn it! Nothing, okay. Oh well. Oh, and I'm sorry, I keep mentioning it's uh, it's red. You also get in trouble, like, if the hand turns red, you're not definitely not supposed to interact with it. That's, that's considered stealing. But if you're in a place you're not supposed to be, you can get in trouble. And there's no way to know that other than paying attention to the area you're in. I don't know if we were, we were allowed to walk back there in the kitchen, but we totally did so anyway. Oh, yeah, this is Tanner's place. Let's uh, head on in. Say hello to Tanner. The man behind the desk is Harrod Hadrian Tanner. Hadrian? Hadrian Tanner. The counselor who admitted you into Southgate Station. Even during your first encounter with him, he struck you as an unusual looking individual. Setting aside his impressive stature, one finds it difficult not to notice how his thick, bushy hair and beard envelop most of his head. That, in addition to his opaque glasses covering his eyes, which you've never seen him without, means that you can see very little of his face and its expression. His somewhat dirty scavenger outfit, which he wore earlier as well, clashes with the clean, finely furnished office, suggesting that Tanner probably does most of his work in the field. As soon as he finishes typing, he raises his head and moves to shake your hand. 
His big hand, tucked into dark brown gloves, makes yours seem like that of a child in comparison. You especially feel his large fingers be twice as thick as yours. His deep voice feels distant and calming when he addresses you. Congratulations once again, Garrett, and welcome to our small community. You scored very well on our tests. No small feat, that. And I'm sure you'll turn out to be a valuable and respected citizen. But more importantly, I hope you'll find peace and kinship here, which are so hard to come by in the chaos surrounding us. I have yet to get to know the other Southgaters, but I have a good feeling I'll fit in with the rest of the crowd pretty well. He nods. I believe so too. People from many different backgrounds reside in this station. Whatever your interests may be, I'm sure you'll find someone who shares them here. I hope the earthquake didn't disturb you much and you were able to rest a bit from all the testing, for you have much work to do today. Events have transpired that require your attention. Are you ready for some field work? How much damage did the earthquake cause? Not much damage to the station itself. There are no casualties, fortunately. Regardless, the railroad tunnel has caved in, so we're cut off until the rubble has cleared up. It's nothing that you should be concerning yourself with at this point in time. Now, back to the business at hand. First, you can have your weapon back. Lucas at the armory should have it. And while you're there, you might want to drop by the shooting range, since you'll be doing some field work today. It might not be a bad idea to warm up in case things get ugly. Speak to Gorski if he's there. He'll help you set up for some practice sessions. However, that is entirely up to you. Um... Understood. And what is this field work you mentioned? Down in the tunnels below our station, just to the north of Crossroad Caves, lies a series of abandoned outposts. These outposts were built by another station a long while ago for the purpose of scouting and defense. In time, they fell to decay. I want you to retake them, so that they might once again serve the same purpose. However, in order to do so, you will need to activate the main power generator that's located inside one of them. Harold from the engineering sector thinks he knows how to get the generator operational. So he should be your first stop after we're done here. As far as I'm aware, there are a total of five outposts, plus the one with the generator. I don't know if it's possible to activate all of them, but try to activate at least three. You may also want to talk to Jonas at the crossroad watch post. It's down in the tunnels just outside the station. You'll be passing through there anyway. He's one of our most experienced scavengers, and he's probably seen more of the South Underrail than any of us here. He'll surely have some useful information for you. How well is this task credited? It's 300 credits. Additional 150 if you activate all the stations. Furthermore, you get to keep anything you find there. Why are we be taking these outposts? It's an important strategic position. Should be certain factions attempt to encroach further into our zone of control. Besides, cleaning them out will also push some of the unwanted wildlife further away from Southgate Station. So it's also beneficial in that regard. Oh, uh, what wildlife is out there? I understand that a few packs of rat hounds have moved into the area, but you'd best talk to Jonas regarding that. He'll have more details. He knows the area inside out. Alright, I'll be off then. Oh, and one more thing before you go. Pascal, our station's chief physician, wanted to see you. You should probably pop down to his office in the medical sector when you have the time. Got it. See you later. Alright, we have our first quest as well. We talk with Pascal on the medical level, talk to Harold on the engineering level to find out how to reactivate the power generator in the outposts to the north. Alright, so let's get some stuff done. You might as well visit all the floors, though, and see what everyone has for us, etc, etc. I think we'll visit the armory first, though, because I wouldn't mind having our weapon back. That this place has auto has auto turrets as auto turrets as well. Auto turrets are very dangerous. You can take a lot of damage from them. Um, yeah, try to avoid them if at all possible. It also means I won't be trying to get through that door. It looks like it's locked anyway. Hello, Mr. Guard. Move along. We have a security camera here. We'll talk about security cameras later on, especially when we had to start stealthing past them. Uh, but at the moment, just know that they're here. They are very tricky to get past if you do want to actually do a stealth character. Uh, Lucas, hey, you have a weapon for us. A short man rises from behind his desk with a grenade case in his hands. The heavy case meets the top of the desk with a thud, raising your eyebrows, which in turn makes the man's face turn to a smile. He moves his glove and shakes your hand with a strong, perhaps too strong, grip before addressing you. Ah, uh, don't worry, Garrett. I ain't gonna blow us up. Nope. Anyway, Metal told me you'd be staying with us for a while. Yeah, for a while at least. Well, friend, make yourself at home. Oh, uh, can I have my weapon back? Of course, it was the, um... Yeah, 5 mil pistol and some ammo, if I recall correctly, right? This one? He produces a pistol that is in such a bad condition, 
people would pay to get rid of it. Actually, no. I had a crossbow. Then who's... Oh! This has got to be Newton's gun. Hey, my bad. Anyway, here you go. He hands me your weapon. No, he hands you your weapon. There. Now that you got that, may I interest you in a couple more things? Hmm? Yeah, let's trade. Alright, we wonder. Here's the inventory screen. This is how trading works in this game. First, this is a bit different than most other games you might have played. See what he's interested in up, up here? He's currently going to buy two firearms, one leather armor, two boot components, three boots, one crossbow, three helmets, three belts, three grenades, and is always looking to buy bullets or regular bolts. He will not buy things that he has not said he's interested in buying. This means if you have uh, mines, he doesn't care about them. You have, uh, if you have like uh, some special uh, corpse bits, like uh, hearts or what have you, he doesn't want them. He won't buy them from you. So keep this in mind when trying to sell to merchants. Always remember that merchants are only interested in the things that they are interested in purchasing. These things, every like, I think, I think it's like an hour of in-game time, or I'm sorry, uh, real life time, I think, this will reset and he'll repurchase new things. Um, the things he wants to purchase and the amount of them is always randomized, um, but generally weapon stores will always buy weapons, for example. Helmets, belts, firearms, armors. Uh, places that deal with doctors, like doctorate stuff, they'll buy med hypos, they might buy some creature bits, different parts, etc, etc. We have 300 South, uh, Southgate credits, to my knowledge. And so, uh, we could sell him some bolts, for example. Everything weighs, weighs us down. What type of crossbow did we get, by the way? We got a Zephyr crossbow, which we'll equip. Damage 11 through 23. Range 14. Optimal is 9. Okay, so let's take a look and see what he's selling. So, he's selling a crossbow part for a hurricane, but that's not an actual crossbow. Here's a scoped Zephyr crossbow. 12 through 25 damage. That's better than our 11 through 23. But it's also 9,480 gold. Uh, sorry, Southgate, Southgate credits. We cannot even make a budge on that. We have to bring this to the dead center at least in order to make the trade. So we won't be getting that weapon, unfortunately. At least not right away. Oh, by the way, their inventory, what they're selling, also will change every so often as well. So if you see something and you really, 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 really want it, make sure you buy it right then. Okay, so what else do I think I need? We could use a dagger. We might find a dagger out there. Oh, well, we don't, we're not going to have the money for a dagger. How about armor? Can we get some better armor? Okay. This isn't the best armor in the world, but it's not... It's probably better than what we're currently wearing for our needs. This is a suit of rat hound leather armor. This armor is made of rat hound leather. No matter how hard you try to wash it out, the faint stench of this filthy creature remains. It, uh, all it does is reduce the mechanical damage we take by 4 and 18%, but that's still better than this, 17 and 3. We lose all the heat damage, we can be burned again, but we don't lose our stealth. If I try selling this, what will he, will he trade this? Yes, and actually he'll take that well off our hands indeed, and we have quite a bit of leftover cash. Can we take a dagger as well to start? Let's think here. What dagger would I want? 9 through 15, 8 through 13. 12 action points. 12 action points, 10% crit. 10% crit. We'd have to pay him some money if I want this dagger. Do we have anything else we can sell him? We can sell him some, we can sell him some bolts. I just want like one more bolt. Alternatively, we could sell him me. Oh, no. No, he won't buy a hypo, Tim. He won't buy a hypo. Bring over, like, one more bolt. I see one more bolt. Oh, my God. Another one? I really want a dagger. I really want a dagger. We might get one early on if we're really, really, really super lucky. But I prefer to make sure we purchase one to start. Let's do this. We'll sell 23 of our bolts, our Rat Hound Leather Armor. We'll pick up a dagger, and we'll also get a suit of Rat Hound Leather Armor back. Okay. Um, he's also... Looks like that one suit of armor he was interested in purchasing is now gone. So maybe later on we can sell him more. 
equip this armor instead. This will not reduce our stealth, which is what I want. I want to have a decent amount of stealth. And we'll take our primary steel weapon. Oh, no. That's the primary weapon, Tim. This goes here. And I think you're... This goes... Where does this go? Like, that stays in your inventory, I guess. All right. So, we're, um... We're good to go. Isn't there a... There's a, uh... What's the button to... Is this right? We'll try this. Yes! Okay. Excellent. All right. So, let's go ahead now with that done and explore the rest of this place. What do we have down here? We have a locked gate. Looks like uh, there's no way to open this from what I can tell. Oh, this is where the, the tests that we would have taken, uh, the tutorial would have happened. So we don't care about that. Here's the practice range, and there's Gorski. We have some shelves. Uh, we're not going to bother searching them. Hey, Gorski. This tall, imposing figure of this battle-scarred veteran towers before you. You met Gorski before. He's one of the counselors that interviewed you when you first arrived. So, I pass off Tanner's little tests and exercises. That could not have been easy, but don't think you're some kind of hotshot now. You are yet to deserve the privilege you've been given. I'm looking forward to the opportunity. We'll see. So why are you here? I'm here for some target practice. Go ahead, then. Yeah, but how do these consoles work? Worski's eyes gradually move across the range, crowned by constantly intensifying frown. He is alone with you. I guess I'll have to do it. All right, look here. It's simple. You use the console to set up the target distance, right? Then you start a session. The session will track your hits and misses automatically, so you can check your progress while you shoot. When you've had enough, end the session. What distance do I set? Well, it depends on the weapon now, doesn't it? If you've got a rifle, you can just set it to max. Otherwise, try eight yards. Experiment a bit, a little. Got it. Oh, actually, I have more questions first. Uh, no, nothing. So something about conversation I should point out in this game. Um, it's not... So, in games like The Witcher 3, it's almost always best to go through all the conversation options you have available. In this game, that is not the case. Uh, sometimes you might not want to say something because a fight may start out. Or you may insult someone. Keep that in mind when playing this game. Okay, let's go to the administration and library next. Oh, I'm so dumb. I sold crossbow bolts. I should have just paid money instead for the things I needed. Okay. Wow, I completely forgot we have Southgate Station money. We should have spent some of that. A bathroom? This is the administration building. I don't think there's anything here we can safely interact with at the moment. There's too many other people here. And we'll get, uh... We'll get pinged for interacting with the red stuff, so all that stuff will probably just stay. Yeah, I can't interact with any of this. I guess we can search the... Can we search the empty stuff? Let's quick save. Search the empty stuff. Can we search the stuff that isn't turning red? We can. It's probably all empty, though, which is why we can't... Uh, which is why we... Can interact with it. I don't think anyone here has anything just to say. I think they're all just normal NPCs. Hello, Mr. Commoner. That's nice and quiet here. That's uh, that yes, yes it is. I like your, I like your mask. Yeah, nothing in any of those shelves. Oh well. All right, let's uh, let's go into this big office and see who's here. Oh, Vera's here. Okay, we'll talk to her as well. See how she's doing. We might, might as well meet all the administrators. She's the last one. You met Vera previously during your testing period. She's one of the counselors here at Southgate Station. Good to see you found your way to my office, Garrett. How do you like your new home so far? Oh, it's been fine so far. Very good. So what can I do for you? Uh, what can you tell me about course... Uh, these are different locations. It's not going to make a whole lot of sense for us to ask about this stuff. But we'll ask about it anyway. Um, so we'll ask about Core City. We can pretend this is where Garrett came from. Core City is a massive, multi-leveled city in north, in the northern, um, lower and upper Underrail. It's a city to the north that spans both levels of Underrail. It serves as a gateway to both the upper Underrail and to the United Station's territories to the north. The city used to be controlled by the Biocorp security forces, 
but they went rogue and split into smaller factions. This was followed by a couple of years of street wars between these factions. The fighting ceased eventually in light of outside threats and serious infrastructural problems, and nowadays the three surviving factions rule the city together through their appointed mayors. What can, you, what can you tell me about the United Stations? Certainly. The United Stations, also called Union by some, is a confederacy of stations in North and Central Underrail. It's an attempt to unify the entirety of Underrail so that we could all work together towards a better future for the human race. Similar to our station, the Union is ruled by a council of five. Most stations of the Union have some degree of autonomy as well. The United Stations are constantly expanding, and while no stations here in the South are yet to become part of it, Something like that will surely happen in the near future. Tell me about the Protectorate. The Underrail Protectorate is a military organization that protects the United Stations from external and internal threats. It predates the Union itself and has also played a crucial role in its creation. The Protectorate is under the command of General Melek, who is widely considered to be one of the most powerful men in the Underrail. He holds a special place in the United Stations Council of Five, and some also believe him to be the de facto ruler of it. Are there any plans for SGS to join United Stations at some point? Our citizens and our counselors are divided on that matter. We currently have good trading relations with the Union, and I personally think it would be a good idea to be among the first to join it here in the, in the South. We are arguably the most powerful faction in these parts, so we could position ourselves advantageously in their organization and also retain a degree of independence. This would also ensure we avoid any potential military conflict in the future should the Protectorate decide to move against some of the less civilized communities in the neighborhood. But as I said, not everyone agrees with me here. You must understand that many of our current citizens come from organizations that have, for various reasons, been Protectorate's targets in the past, so they are not very keen on being buddies with their old enemies. But let me ask you, what is your opinion on the matter? Would you like to see your station become a member of the United Stations? Uh, Garrett probably himself does not very much want to see this occur, because he's a thief. And that sounds like more, a more organized um, group. Probably easiest if uh, they, they don't take over. But we won't go all out and say no. We'll just say we'll reserve our judgment. So, I'm not sure. I'm reserving judgment until I learn more about all this. Ah, uh, you're a wise man. I hope that, like me, your future dealings with the United Stations will encourage you to support their efforts. Alright, see you later, Vera. Everyone, I've been playing for like about, seems like 40 minutes or so. So I think it's probably a good time for us to stop. I'll check on the recording. I've been playing for less than 40 minutes, like a 35 or so. Then uh, we'll come back and play another 20. But uh, right now I'm going to stop, compress this part down. And assuming I am uh, been playing for a while, I'll thank you all for watching. And I'll see you all in the next video. We'll probably get involved into some combat in the next video as well. Unless, well, maybe we'll fit it in this one after all. But in any case, thank you guys again for watching. And either I'll see you in a few seconds or I'll see you in the next one. Take care, everyone. Or maybe I won't. Maybe I'll see you in a few seconds. Start again. Again, end the video.